and welcome to your next complete IGCSE PE lesson. We're sticking with the skeletal and muscular system today, moving on to lesson three in the chapter, movement at joints. As always, you can find this one in the contents page of your official Cambridge textbook, and we'll be following learning objectives from the Cambridge syllabus so that you know exactly what you need to know for your final exams. Today, we only have two learning objectives, to know the types of movement possible around a joint and to provide sporting examples to demonstrate your knowledge of each movement type. We'll be looking at both the learning objectives together today, so this is quite a simple lesson for you to follow. Our first movement type is flexion, which simply means bending a body part or decreasing the angle at a joint. Ball and socket joints and hinge joints both reduce flexion, and it can be seen at the hip joint when striking a ball in football, at the elbow during the upward phase of a bicep curl, and at the knee joint during the running stride directly after the push-off or propulsion phase. Now throughout this video we'll see that each movement type has a partner, and extension is the exact opposite of flexion. Extension therefore means straightening a body Body part or increasing the angle at a joint. It can be seen at the elbow when blocking a spike in volleyball, at the hip joint when taking off in long jump, and at the knee joint when striking a ball in football. Next we have abduction, which is a sideways movement away from the center of the body. The main joints at which abduction is possible are the ball and socket joints or shoulder and hip. We abduct at the shoulder when performing the butterfly in swimming, Football goalkeepers raise their arms to make saves to either side of the goal, while the leg moves away from the centre of the body when lunging to the side in badminton. The opposite movement is adduction, which can easily be remembered as we're adding a body part to the body. It's a sideways movement towards the centre of the body and can be seen in football when passing with the instep, pulling the arms inwards to raise the body up when performing a ring routine in gymnastics and at the hip joint when bringing the legs together during the kick phase of a breaststroke in swimming. Rotation is our next type of movement and it's simply a turning point around an imaginary line or axis. Examples of rotation include turning the head to breathe during the front crawl, pivoting in netball where the standing foot stays grounded and the rest of the body turns to find a pass to a teammate and performing a topspin forehand in table tennis. This skill involves some rotation at the shoulder joint as the player turns the angle of the bat to generate topspin. Circumduction can easily be confused with rotation, but while the end of a limb stays stationary while it rotates, it moves in a circle when circumduction occurs. Again, both of these types of movement mostly occur at ball and socket joints and can be seen during the front crawl arm pull in swimming. The arm also follows a circle motion when bowling in cricket and during the preparation, transition and execution phases of a serve in tennis. The penultimate type of movement that you need to know about is dorsiflexion. And dorsiflexion, as well as our next type of movement, are unique to the ankle joint. Dorsiflexion is a movement that causes the toes to move upwards towards the leg and can be obviously seen when a sprinter is in the blocks, a swimmer takes up their position on the starting block, or during the running stride. During the push-off phase, the toes point slightly downwards, but dorsiflexion needs to occur as the leg moves forward before the next heel strike. Plantar flexion is the opposite movement and therefore causes the toes to move downwards towards the floor. Plantar flexion can regularly be seen when watching gymnastics, is also essential for generating extra momentum when taking off in long jump and can be seen when striking the ball with the laces in football. Now, this slide includes a very basic summary of the main joints at which each type of movement occurs. It's important that you get a grasp of this so that you can start to analyze sporting movements and skills in a little bit more detail. Hinge joints such as the elbow and the knee are only capable of producing flexion and extension, while ball and socket joints such as the shoulder and the hip have a much wider range of movement and can therefore produce abduction, adduction, rotation, circumduction, flexion and extension. Now we've already covered all of the information that you need to know on this topic for your final exam. If you'd like to test what you've learned, I recommend you pause the video here and identify the types of movement occurring at joints 1, 2 and 3 as the rugby player kicks the ball. At point one, the rugby player has abducted their arm or moved it to the side to provide balance when striking the ball. Extension has occurred at the knee joint of the standing leg to provide stability, while dorsiflexion can be seen at the ankle joint as the toes are pointing upwards towards the shin. Now you can pause your video again to identify the four types of movement being produced by the gymnast. Firstly, the arm is in a straight position with a big angle at the elbow joint, suggesting that extension has happened. 
Extension can also be seen at the hip joint as the gymnast has pulled their leg backwards. The leg is also bent at the knee joint which suggests to us that flexion has occurred while plantar flexion is occurring at the ankle joint as the gymnast has pointed their toes downwards and away from their leg. As always, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one.